Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time at my channel, hello, welcome. I don't normally get face to face with you guys, but I wanted to do something a little bit different today and just have kind of a sit down moment before we go into the process video for today. So it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna be creating some cards, but I wanted to kind of talk about why I'm doing this project and some of the heart check that I had um, before I put this together. So uh, as, some of you who have been followers of mine for a while know I like to share a variety of things on my channel, a whole lot of different um, Bible journaling and crafting and processes and kits and, you know, all these different things that I might have going on. And um, what goes on behind the scenes setting all that up is usually trying to set some kind of schedule for myself. So I have, you know, certain videos that I want to get to, certain projects that I want to get to, certain commitments that I have and things like that. And so um, the other day we were, um, we're at a new church. My family were going to a new church the last couple months. And um, in the bulletin, there was an announcement that they needed um, some valentines for widows in the church. They were going to do like a luncheon for the widows and they were asking for people to donate um, valentines for the those widows at that luncheon. And initially I just kind of looked past it and then, I don't know, I just picked up the flyer. I was like, oh, I really feel like this is something that I should participate in. Mind you, like we've only been there a couple months. I don't really know anybody. Definitely don't know the names of any of the people that are on this list or even the name of the person I need to contact to, you know, figure out what, what all this entails. But, um, obviously I have a lot of things in my space and at my, re you know, at my hands that I can use. And so I thought what a great way, um, to put those to use is to create some cards for this project. And so I came home all jazzed and excited and thought, okay, this is what I want to do. And so I sat down in my office and started looking at my calendar and, and, you know, all these different, um, kits that are coming out and assignments that I have. And I'm like, gosh, I don't have, I don't have time to do another project. I don't have time to make these cards. Um, cause they had to be done in like a week. I don't have time to make these cards because I have, you know, X, Y, and Z that needs to be done today, tomorrow, and you know, so forth. And I kind of just set it aside and started to work on these other projects. And then I totally had a heart check moment, a <laughs> conviction from God that, um, um, you know, what am I, what am I doing with the stuff that I have in my channel and the resources that I have? Um, what is the purpose and what am I using it for? And so while I definitely recognize that there is value in, um, doing these projects and filming them as an encouragement for you guys and, um, you know, having those little scripture moments and giving you guys, um, tips and tricks for how to use the things that you have or, um, expose you to some different product and things like that. Um, what, what is the ultimate purpose of that. And here I'm sitting here thinking that I'm pushing aside loving on people who need to be loved because I have this checkoff list of things that I need to, to get done. And while yes, all those projects and video ideas that I had are good. They're all things that will serve you guys and give you guys resources and give you, you know, scripture. It might be an encouragement and things like that. I'm missing out on an opportunity to love on people in my real life. Um, and so I thought it was important to come on here and kind of share that with you guys. Cause I know, especially in the Bible journaling community, um, we kind of live in this bubble. Sometimes if you don't have a Bible journaling group that you go to or friends that you Bible journal with, um, I would say the vast majority of us really, um, our Bible journaling experience is very personal one-on-one -on -one with God all by ourselves. Um, and then we share it on social media. Some of us share it on social media and we have interactions with people all around the world, but only through social media. Um, and we occasionally have those, you know, once a year retreats or something like that, but majority and majority of the time, um, we're really just kind of isolating ourselves a little bit, um, uh, in what we're creating and getting caught up on that. And then maybe we put it on the internet for other people to see. Now I'm not going to downplay some of the friendships that I have with people on the internet who have never even gotten to hug in person, because I think that there is some value in that. Um, I have some people that I dearly, dearly care about, um, that I've met through this community. Um, but here I, in my real world, in my local church, I was getting Getting ready to set aside an opportunity to serve and to love real people in my life because I had it in my mind that I needed to do all this other gotta do stuff. 
And then on the next level, um, once I finally got past that, I was like, okay, I'm going to do this project. I'm going to set aside all these other things. I'm going to do these cards. So I started looking at some of the things that I had. And I was like, okay, what can I use for my stash to do these cards with? And right off the bat, my initial thought was the new Wholehearted Kit from Illustrated Faith because it has all those cute um, like fabric uh, hearts and things. I'm like, oh, this would be great to make cards with. And then the selfish side of me was like, oh, but I don't want to use the product for that. I want to use the product for these beautiful entries that I want to create for myself in my Bible and, you know, all these things that I have planned so that I can share it on social media and share this, you know, great idea for how to piece things together and put together this page. And, and no, I want to hoard it. I want it to be for me because, you know, this it's pretty and it's special and I like it. And so I want to keep it for me heart check moment. <laughs> like, why would I just hoard it for me when I could use that to be a blessing to somebody else? And so um, that is what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be using some different products from around my stash, just pulling out some Valentine's Day themed things to make some cards for um, this event that they're having at my church. But I wanted to just hop on with you guys and just um, not to call anybody out, really just to um, be vulnerable and honest with you guys in a weakness that I was struggling with, because I think maybe somebody out there might be struggling with the same thing, um, or it might be a heart check moment for you also. And if not, if it's for the sole purpose of me and getting me in a better place, um, then that's okay too. But um, I have an idea that I might not be the only one, um, especially when we're spending, you know, our money or our time on some of these, you know, products and stuff that are all around us. Um, we have this kind of hoarder tendency sometimes, I think, and, um, you know, saving it for the perfect project or saving it for ourselves. And so um, I, I don't want Bible journaling to become all about that. Um, I want it to be a reminder of the greatest commandments, love God, love others. And in this instance, I was failing to love others um, and was choosing to put myself <laughs> over that. So um, I hope that that is encouraging to some of you guys. I struggle too. I have those moments too. Um, and maybe just an inspiration for you guys to pull out some product that maybe you're hoarding, maybe you're holding on to, maybe you're saving for something special and to use it to be a blessing to somebody else in your life. It does not have to be something like this luncheon that we're doing, but maybe there, maybe there's that missing in your church. Maybe you don't have something like that going on and you want to be the one to start something like that, whether it be um, a card drive for um, for whatever it might be. Maybe each month you're just taking down um, a list of people within the church that need an encouragement, whether they're going through an illness or they just recently had a loss or um, maybe they're just in a funk and they're just having a really hard month and just need some encouragement to take the products that we are accumulating and that we are um, you know, purchasing and, and acquiring for Bible journaling and turn it around and use it to be a blessing to other people, not just a blessing um, to ourselves and, you know, deepening our relationship with God, which definitely is important, but to take it a step further and to use that to be a blessing to other people. So um, I hope that was an encouragement. We're going to go ahead and jump on over to my desk and we're going to put together those cards. I hope you'll join along with me. If you do do something similar um, or make something similar, please tag me on Instagram so I can see and let's just maybe make this a, a movement that we start um, sharing our product and not just hoarding our product. So let's head on over to the desk and let's put together some cards today. Okay, so here's a look at the four card variations that we'll be doing. Uh, I needed 20 cards, so I decided to do five of each one of these variations, uh, just so that there would be some difference, but I didn't feel like I needed to do 20 different card fronts. Um, and so you just need to figure out what works best for you. And so I wanted to kind of share with you a variety of different leftover bits um, that I had in my stash. Uh, these are the fabric hearts from the uh, Wholehearted Kit from Illustrated Faith this month. I do believe these are sold out. Um, so I'm going to show you a DIY version as well. Um, but this was just simply layering two of the hearts and then stitching. So I will show you that. We'll put that together. Um, together. Um, this one here is using some scrapbooking paper from Felicity Jane and a mini envelope punch. And um, this is that DIY fabric heart. So I will show you how to do that to make this little bunting card here. And then this one's using some of the leftover pieces from the heart layers kit from Illustrated Faith. Um, basically, it's just a cardstock heart and a vellum heart. So you could very easily recreate these with some patterned cardstocks and some patterned vellum if you didn't have these in your stash and then some machine stitching. So I wanted to keep it very, very simple. These are the fronts. So they are going to go on to a card base here. 
here and I'll kind of show you how we put that together. And rather than writing directly in the card, I decided to do something a little bit different. So I found this um, part of a verse. This is part of Jeremiah 31, three it says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And I went ahead and typed these out on a whole bunch of leftover journaling cards that I had and decided to stick these in here. That way the recipient could reuse this card, re-gift it if they wanted to, and they could pull this card out and use it, you know, stick it in their wallet or stick it on their mirror, or, you know, something like that. So they've got that verse in front of them. Uh, and I thought that might be kind of a fun interactive way. And then they could repurpose the card if they wanted to. So I went ahead and just picked out a variety of cards. I tried to do some that were, you know, pink and girly and then some that were some like more neutral for the men. I mean, it's still girly. I mean, that's just my craft space, but I tried to keep it pretty neutral. So typed those out. I uh, pulled out that mini um, envelope punch board. So I will show you how to use that. I got a lot of use out of this uh, die set from Lawn Fawn. It's all these little heart pieces and that's really what I used for most of these or I guess two of these uh, cards and so that was really handy. And then I pulled out this older stamp set from Illustrated Faith, the You Are Loved set and that's where I got my sentiment from. I don't make a whole lot of cards so I didn't have a lot of card sentiments but I just flipped through all my Bible journaling stamps and I found this one it worked perfect. You might be able to flip through and find um, some other sentiments that will work or even just alpha um, stamps alone and then just stamp out the phrase if you wanted to. Um, there's also some beautiful stamps from By the Well for God. I kind of looked through those. That would be great if you wanted to do some watercolor card fronts or something like that. They have some great floral images that, you know, work well in Bible journaling but are great for a project like this as well. Um, but this would also be a good time to pull out any leftover die cuts that you might have. Uh, I have have a little tray Let's see if I can pull it out right here where I stick all my like leftover kit bits and so this might be a time to go through that and pull out those and use some of those to put together your cards I don't want you to go out and buy new product to put these together the kind of the point is to use up what we have in our stash and any leftovers and extras that we might have it laying around so let me go ahead and put you on fast forward and we will quickly put together these four card fronts and I'll kind of show you the measurements and all that goodness Okay, so I'm gonna start by prepping my card bases and card fronts. So I have an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock here that I'm gonna cut down at five and a half on the long ways. Those are gonna be my card bases. And then this other sheet, I'm gonna cut into quarters. So I'm gonna cut at five and a half, and then I'm gonna cut at four and a quarter. And this is gonna give me four card fronts. Now, I like to have a little bit of a border, so I'm gonna go ahead and trim off a quarter inch off the side and off the bottom of these panels, and then that way I have an eighth of an inch border, and I'll show you that here in a second. For the card bases, I'm just going to score these at four and a quarter, or you can just fold it in half, <laughs> but a scoreboard gives you a nice clean uh, fold there. So here you can see the slightly smaller card front gives you a little bit of a border or you can use the larger ones that cover the whole front of the card base. I will link all the card stocks I use and all that goodness down below for you guys. So I found it extremely helpful to use a stamp positioning tool for a project like this. I've already figured out where the center of my card fronts are so I'm just going to line up my stamps on one that I had previously stamped. But you can see I'm just putting the first part of the sentiment in my stamp positioning tool and then I can just ink it up, stamp it down, leave everything where it's at and then slide in the next card front. And so I can just go through and actually put you know, five or six of these in the stamp tool at a time and just pull them off. You can see off the top there as I stamp them. I am using some VersaFine Onyx Black ink that gives me the nice clean black image that I want. Um, and so I'm just gonna go through an assembly style, stamp out a whole bunch of these all at once. And this seemed to work um, the best for me. I'm gonna do the same thing for the bottom portion of the sentiment. Um, this one, I couldn't stamp them both at the same time just with the shape of those stamps. Okay, these cards are super, super simple. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of an adhesive to the center of these fabric hearts um, just to stick them together while I take it over to my sewing machine and just run a stitch right down the center. Easy peasy. These do not need to take a super long time. Like I said, I don't have a lot of time, so I wanted to keep these very simple. I'm gonna add a little bit of washi tape to the back just to secure that stitching. And then I can kind of fluff up the hearts. 
and I am going to add some foam adhesive to the back of these panels just to pop them up and you know I don't know make them seem a little fancier than than they actually are uh, you could use craft foam as well for this and then I'm just going to line that up and center it on my card and that is it so you can see you could do you know tons and tons and tons of them with that simple um, card design for this next one I have a piece of paper that I have cut down to two and a seventh eight of an inch square uh, and I came to that just using the grid that's on this mini envelope um, punch board it has all the measurements you know however big you want your envelope or your card to be um, it tells you the measurements to cut your paper at and then it has the directions for how to use this it's super simple um, it tells you where to line up your first edge and then you're just lining up your scored lines rotating it and punching rotating and punching super super simple uh, I'm not going to go into detail on how to use that tool because the directions come with it and it's really quite easy I'm just going to add a little bit of adhesive to assemble that envelope and I'm going to use a T ruler just to make sure everything's lined up because these cards are so sim simple. I want to make sure everything's straight because it will be obvious um, that it's crooked on a simple card like this. For the hearts, I just use that Lawn Fawn die set to cut out um, a couple different sizes using some Felicity Jane paper scraps that I had laying around. And then I'm just adding a little bit of faux stitching detail with a journaling pen. Um, because that sentiment is big and bold and black, I felt like I needed some other black element on this card. And the previous card I'd used the black um, thread to stitch on those hearts. So this is just going to add a little bit more black to there. And then just using a you know combination of adhesives, whatever seems to work for the size of the element, and then stick those down. Again, super, super quick and easy, and you can do a ton of those all at once. So that's the second card. Again, I'm going to be adding some uh, foam adhesive to the back and then just adding that to one of those card panels. So next up, I'm going to show you how to do those fabric hearts um, yourself. So I have a piece of fabric and I'm just backing it with some double sided adhesive. I have this one here from scrapbook.com um, that comes in these two inch wide. They have a variety of sizes. These worked great and this is a really, really nice adhesive. This is new to me and I was really pleasantly surprised with it. So I can remove the backer and then I'm going to stick that sticky piece of fabric down to a sheet of cardstock. And then I can run this through my die cutting machine with those heart dies and then have some DIY fabric hearts, just like the ones that come in the wholehearted kit. So I pulled out some jute twine and I'm just going to um, add this to the front of the card panel just with some washi tape to secure it to the back. Um, these aren't going through the mail, so they don't have to be, you know, super, super sturdy. Um, if you're sending them through the mail, you may want to add, you know, a little bit stronger adhesive than this, but this should work just fine. So I have my little hanger there, and then now I can start attaching my hearts. So I'm going to add little foam squares to the back of my hearts. Um, this is just going to add some dimension, but also I'm going to use these to tack down that jute twine. So I'm going to kind of sandwich... Um, the twine between the heart and the card. Again, making sure everything's lined up and straight and even with my ruler there. So you can see I'm just grabbing a hold of the jute and then sticking it down. And so it looks like they're hanging off of that twine, but they are firmly attached. I don't have to worry about anything falling apart or falling off, um, you know, when it's being handled. So the same thing for these other two hearts, just adding a couple of foam squares and then sticking those down. You could also use teeny tiny little clothes pins or um, paper clips would be cute or even um, a tiny attacher. Because you're working on a separate panel, you can add stitching and staples and things like that. And then when you attach it to the card base, everything's nice and clean and hidden behind that front panel. So again, adding some foam adhesive to the back and then lining that up on the panel. Again, super, super easy. We'll be making tons of those faux fabric heart elements um, throughout the month here. This last one, I'm just adding a teeny tiny little bit of adhesive to the center of these hearts. I have a paper heart and a vellum heart. 
This is just to keep things secured while I run it through my um, sewing machine. And I lightly drew myself an outline for that little tail just to give me a guide when I ran it through my sewing machine. If you don't have a sewing machine, you could also hand stitch that or just use a pen, a journaling pen, and draw that um, little line off the edge. But I like having the extra texture on there since these cards are so simple. And again, just securing everything on the back with some washi tape. And then I will add some foam adhesive to the back of that as well. Uh, again, this just kind of pops it up and just makes them look a little bit more finished. And then line that up on my card base. And that is it. Once I fluff it up here, I love all the texture. And these came together really, really quick. Once I had the designs down and the pieces cut out, everything came together very quickly. So I can stick these little typed cards inside. Off camera, I'll probably go ahead and type a personalized message and stick that in there as well. Um, but that is going to be it. So I hope that inspires you to use some of your product and hopefully be a blessing to somebody else with our crafty goodness. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box for links to everything that I use today. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.